Have you ever wondered where the power for your home comes from? Let's explore the world of uranium, a naturally occurring radioactive element. With the atomic number 92, it proudly holds its place on the periodic table under the symbol U. Uranium is no ordinary element. It's the fuel that powers nuclear reactors lighting up our lives. And unfortunately, it's also the primary material for nuclear weapons. Fascinatingly, uranium isn't just one thing. It has several isotopes. The most commonly found one is uranium-238, which makes up about 99.3% of natural uranium. However, another isotope, uranium-235, steals the limelight in the world of nuclear energy and weapons. It's ready to undergo fission more readily than its sibling, uranium-238, making it invaluable in these fields. Now that we know what uranium is, where exactly do we get it from? Uranium isn't just lying around waiting to be picked up. It needs to be mined from the Earth's crust. So how does the process of uranium mining work? Let's dive in. Imagine uranium as a precious gem hidden deep within the Earth. To unearth this gem, we primarily use two methods, open pit mining and underground mining. Open pit mining, as the name suggests, involves creating a large open pit in the ground, typically when the uranium is near the surface. On the other hand, when the uranium deposits are deep within the earth, miners use underground mining. They dig tunnels and shafts to reach the uranium ore. Now we're dealing with massive machinery here. Excavators, dump trucks, drills. These are the giants that delve into the earth's crust to extract the uranium ore. It's a colossal task, but it's just the beginning. Once the uranium ore is extracted, it's transported to a mill where it's crushed into a fine powder. This powder is then processed to extract uranium in a form that can be further enriched. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. We'll delve into the processing stage in the next scene. You might be wondering where these uranium mines are located. Most of the world's uranium is mined in just a handful of countries. Kazakhstan leads the way, contributing to over 40% of global uranium production. Other major players include Canada, Australia, Namibia, and Niger. These countries are home to some of the largest and richest uranium mines in the world, but it's not all about size and abundance. The quality of uranium ore varies greatly from mine to mine. Some mines have high-grade ore with a lot of uranium, while others have low-grade ore with less uranium. Regardless of the grade, the goal is the same, to extract as much uranium as possible. Now, you might be wondering, is the uranium ready to be used right after it's mined? Well, not quite. Before it can be used as fuel in nuclear reactors or for making nuclear weapons, the mined uranium needs to go through several processing stages. But that's a story for another scene. Uranium ore needs to be processed to extract the usable uranium. The journey of uranium from the earth to the power plants is not a simple one. After mining, the uranium ore undergoes a series of processing steps to isolate the uranium and remove impurities. The first step in this process is crushing. The ore is ground into a fine powder which increases the surface area and allows the uranium to be more easily extracted. Next, the powdered ore is treated with a solution of sulfuric acid or sodium carbonate. This process, known as leaching, dissolves the uranium from the ore. The uranium-rich solution is then separated from the solid waste, or tailings. These tailings contain the bulk of the radioactive material from the original ore and must be carefully managed to prevent environmental contamination. Once the uranium has been dissolved, it's time for the next step, precipitation. This involves adding a chemical to the solution that causes the uranium to form solid particles, which can be easily separated from the remaining liquid. The solid uranium particles are then filtered out and dried to create what's known as yellow cake. Despite its innocuous name, yellow cake is a highly concentrated form of uranium and must be handled with care. This is not a cake you'd want at your birthday party. Now you might be wondering, surely handling radioactive materials like uranium must be dangerous. And you'd be right. Special care and precautions are needed to protect workers and the environment from radiation exposure. This includes the use of protective clothing and equipment, regular monitoring of radiation levels, and strict rules about the disposal of radioactive waste. It's also important to remember that uranium, while incredibly energy-dense, is not a renewable resource. Once it's been mined and processed, it can't be replaced. This is why it's so crucial to use it wisely and efficiently. The uranium is now extracted, but it's not quite ready to power our homes yet. But don't worry, we'll get to that part soon. 
Stay tuned for the next step in our uranium journey, enrichment. Uranium needs to be enriched to increase the concentration of uranium-235. And why is that? Well, it's simple. Uranium-235 is the isotope that readily undergoes fission, releasing energy which can be harnessed for power. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. To understand the enrichment process, we need to start from the beginning. After uranium ore is processed, it's turned into a gas known as uranium hexafluoride, or UF6. This gas contains both uranium-238 and uranium-235, but remember it's the uranium-235 that we're really interested in. So how do we increase the concentration of uranium-235? Enter the centrifuge, picture a spinning top. When it spins, things get thrown outwards, right? It's a similar concept with the centrifuge. It spins the UF6 at high speeds, and the heavier uranium-238 is flung towards the outer edges, while the lighter uranium-235 stays closer to the center. This separation allows us to collect the uranium-235. But it's not as easy as spinning once, and voila, enriched uranium. A single centrifuge isn't enough. It takes a series of centrifuges, often thousands of them, linked together in what's known as a cascade to get the job done. Another method used is diffusion. Here, the UF6 gas is forced through a semi-permeable membrane. The lighter uranium-235 atoms pass through the membrane more readily than the heavier uranium-238 atoms, again allowing for separation and collection of the desired isotope. But why go through all this trouble? Well, natural uranium contains less than 1% of uranium-235. For most nuclear reactors, the concentration needs to be increased to between 3 to 5 percent. And for nuclear weapons, the concentration needs to be above 90 percent. This enrichment process is a delicate balance of science and engineering, and it's pivotal to the production of nuclear power. With the uranium now enriched, it's ready to be used as fuel. But how? Uranium fuel powers nuclear reactors, which generate electricity for our homes. This sentence is packed with science, but let's break it down to make it a bit more digestible. In a nuclear power plant, uranium plays the starring role in a dramatic process known as nuclear fission. This is where the nucleus of a uranium atom is split into two smaller fragments by a neutron. This reaction releases a colossal amount of heat and more neutrons, which go on to split more uranium atoms, creating a self-sustaining chain reaction. Now here's where the magic happens. This heat is used to turn water into steam. And steam, as we all know, has the power to drive turbines. As these turbines spin, they generate electricity, which is then transmitted to our homes, schools, hospitals, and businesses. It's this simple but ingenious use of uranium that keeps our lights on and our devices charged. But it's not just about convenience. Nuclear power is also impressively green. Yes, you heard that right. Unlike burning fossil fuels, nuclear fission doesn't release carbon dioxide or other greenhouse gases into our atmosphere. This makes it a low-carbon energy source, a valuable asset in our fight against climate change. And let's talk about efficiency. A small amount of uranium can produce a great quantity of energy. To put this into perspective, one gram of uranium-235 can generate as much energy as three tons of coal or 14 barrels of oil. That's a lot of power in a tiny package. It's clear that uranium, in its role as the star of nuclear power, has immense potential. It offers us a low-carbon, highly efficient energy source that can power our world without contributing to the worsening climate crisis. However, like all great stories, this one has its share of conflict. Uranium and nuclear power aren't without their challenges. And these challenges, from nuclear accidents to radioactive waste disposal, are something we'll dive into in the next scene, so stay tuned. Despite its immense energy potential, Uranium raises several environmental and health concerns. For starters, uranium mining and processing carry inherent risks. The radioactive nature of uranium means that without proper precautions it can contaminate soil and water, posing significant risks to ecosystems and human health. Then there's the issue of nuclear accidents. We've all heard of Chernobyl and Fukushima, stark reminders of the potential devastation when things go wrong. These incidents highlight the importance of stringent safety measures and rigorous oversight in the operation of nuclear facilities. Radioactive waste disposal is another challenge. Although a small volume, nuclear waste is highly hazardous and requires careful long-term management. The question of how to safely store this waste for thousands of years is one that still puzzles us. Lastly, 
Uranium's role in nuclear weapons production raises serious concerns about nuclear proliferation. This underlines the urgent need for global cooperation and strict regulation to prevent misuse. So, the next time you switch on the lights, remember the journey of uranium from the ground to your home powering your world.